The saga of trans athletes competing in women's sport appears to be nearing what I would say is a common sense conclusion, at least for now. Images like this of transgender swimmer Leah Thomas that we discussed earlier kind of crystallise the absurdity and unfairness. Well, certainly that's what I think. Well, high-profile stories like that of Laurel Hubbard, who made the Tokyo Olympics as a trans weightlifter at the age of 43, nearly double the age of any of the other female contestants. Spark furious debate. Well, last week, World Athletics announced that trans athletes will no longer be allowed to compete against women from the end of this month. They, said they did it to protect fairness and integrity of women's sport. Critics said it's transphobic. That's their response to anything in this, in this debate. And leaves trans women with nowhere to go, which is a fairer argument, which has to be resolved. Well, joining me now is British shot put champion Amelia Strickler and human rights campaigner Peter Tatchell. Well, welcome to both of you. Um, Amelia, we had you on before about this and you were very passionate about why this needed to happen. So I'd imagine you've really been pleased to see this development. 100%. We're, a lot of women, especially in athletics, are really, really excited about this. It's just about now making it go into grassroots and master's level where there is a lot of trans women competing in the women's category as well. So now that we've got the elite level, it needs to be all levels, all sports. So, Peter, it's complex, this, because I don't want trans athletes not to be able to compete. Let me just mm. say that mm. straight away. But I spent some time with Martina Navratilova in Florida last week, uh, who's been recovering from double cancer and it was a very moving interview. But we actually had a chat about this as well, because she's one of the most high-profile LGBTQ campaigners there's ever been. And yet, when she raised her head over the parapet about this and said, I just think it's a real problem and you can't allow this to continue, otherwise women's sport will be destroyed, she then got uh, tried to be cancelled and people abused her, they shamed her and so on, which I thought was completely ridiculous. The idea she's not a friend of the transgender community because she's trying to stand up for what she saw as an unfairness for women's rights in sport. Mm. And I just thought that was terrible. What, what do you make of this ruling by Sebastian Coe and World Athletics and how do we resolve all this? Well, the first principle is that sport has to be fair. And it's not fair if people have particular unique advantages. So you would accept that? Well, I accept that. But I would also accept that not all trans athletes are the same. So some may have an advantage and others may not. So, for example, I know a woman, a trans woman, who competes in a women's football team. Among the team, she's one of the smallest and weakest of the team. Mm. No one can say that she has an unfair advantage. And equally, all athletes in elite sports have some kind of advantage. They may have extra large lungs or hearts, uh, long legs, mm. tall height. Um, Michael Phelps, that fantastic, brilliant swimmer who won so many gold mm. medals in the pool... Had an unfeasibly large wingspan. Yeah, and right, she, when he put his arms out, it was six <laughs> inches longer than anybody else's reach. So, and, I mean, and, I mean, but, but he also had yeah, extra large lung capacity. Right. So I, look, I've heard this... Extra large feet. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's not an invalid argument, I Amelia, mean, yeah. that they're, you know, in all sport... You're going to get some people who are physical freaks, if for want of a better phrase, like Michael Phelps, who literally could do this, and it's normally the same as your height or something, isn't it, the span? And he had six inches extra, massive hands, right? Obviously can help him, and huge feet, I think, as well. What's, what's your response to that argument? But biologically, they're still the sex that they're competing against. Um, you know, at the end of the day, reducing a testosterone level... Is, is not going to cut it because women are so much more than a testosterone level. Mm. You know, phys physiologically, you know, periods, whole other, whole other discussion. Well, that is certainly not and, to be... You know, yeah. like it, it's, we're so much more than a testosterone level, so just reducing a testosterone level, at the end of the day, I mean, it, it's not going to change the physiological differences. Because a lot of these people, too, are, you know, they're training as a male athlete for a long period of time of before course. transitioning. So they're having and that higher like testosterone lung, lung level. And it's things like lung capacity as well, all these things which you get after you know, having gone through puberty. They're real things which give most, most trans athletes a, an immediate biological advantage. That's my problem. The other half of this is what, what if, if they don't compete against women born to female bodies, what happens to trans athletes? Now, I think there's one of two things you can do. Either they compete against their biological sex which most of them have done anyway for many years, actually never as successfully and they as they do when they compete against women, which I think levels. is the argument right there. Or you create an entirely new category. There are more and more, as you said, at grassroots level, you create an entirely new category for trans athletes to compete against other trans athletes. Well, my starting point is there shouldn't be a blanket ban on all trans athletes. There should be individual assessment. 
So where there are issues raised... That's never going to work, is it? Well, no, of course it can. You can't you know. make it one, you know, person by person by person by person. You can't. Well, there are not that many trans athletes overall, and it's quite feasible. Actually, there are more and more of them. Well, there are, but there's still a very... There's already 13 in elite athletics. The, the, the really? DSD athletes. So 13 elite athletes. You see, what my issue with it is, they're going to start breaking women's records irrevocably. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, Leah Thomas won one race against females. Mm -hmm. you know, just from point of the argument, females by 50 odd seconds. I mean, it was ridiculous. And, and then at the podium, well. towers over these, these... I mean, this podium picture, you can't... No one can be happy about that. Yeah. That is clear advantage no, I, I, for a biological yeah. male. Well, I'm saying where there is a clear, demonstrable, proven advantage, an unfair advantage, then, of course, that should not be allowed to take place. But I do think that individual assessment rather than a blanket ban is the way to go. OK, Amelia... Because then... You, you, you penalise the ones who do have an unfair advantage, but you don't penalise the ones that don't. So, Amelia, it's interesting, because in, in rugby, I think, in places like New Zealand now, for example, they do actually... Because they recognise that some kids, when they get to 13, are twice the size of other 13-year-old kids, they now separate them in weight classes rather than age. So they put the ones who are a certain size and they, they play rugby against each other, depending... But it's no longer about age. Uh, okay. it, it, so is what Peter says, has he got any merit to do it this way? I mean, I, 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 I don't think me or many female athletes would think that was still appropriate because of the biological sex that is there at the end of the day. Yeah. There's still so many physiological differences and Peter, that they're you not gonna have, change. you know, They're never going to have a period, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas every elite female athlete, once a month... Mm. has, but in some cases, quite a crippling condition yeah. which they're going to get every month, which will affect their training, it will affect Competitions. everything. Competitions. Competitions, right? Mm. Which I, I completely understand when women say that. That's not yeah. going to happen to a trans athlete. No, it won't. So they have that advantage regardless of their size. Yeah, yeah. But again, I say, don't have a blanket ban, have individual assessment. I think it's particularly unfair for intersex athletes like Casa Semenya. Well, that's a South different Africa. case. But, but it's very similar because mm. it's about, you know, a mixture of male and female, uh, and it's not something they have chosen. It's something they're I born listen, with. I do feel... I, I feel... It's not like yeah. the, the rapist situation in Scotland where I think no. they're literally scamming the system. Mm. I do have respect for people who transition. It's not about being transphobic at all. It's yeah, about... Yeah, but Casta didn't transition. She was born... No, no, I know, I know. I, I think that's a different case. But yeah. I, I think that... They're, they're very, very unique cases. I mean, there's hardly any of them, right? In, in... Well, there, there's the 13. That's the number. No, no, that in, I'm in terms of Casas Mar DSD. Mar yeah, sorry, that was the number I, I was referring to. There oh, were 13 was. DSD athletes in ah. the women's distance events, and three of them had gold, silver, and bronze in 2016 right. Olympics. So, I mean, where you know, clearly they have an advantage because they've done really, really well for themselves. Yeah. Or they so... might just be very good athletes. But you know, I, I take. But they did not, go through male a, puberty. There's a debate going on here, yeah. and I think we need more science, more investigation. And I do think, as I said, it has to be fair. But okay. World Athletics said we've seen the science. This is why we've yeah. made our decision. Well, we've seen the science. Peter, I like your attempt to try and win this <laughs> argument, but I think I don't agree with even you. Lord Coe <laughs> said, <laughs> he he, even Lord Coe said he did. Even Lord Coe he said it's not proven that they don't have an advantage. So, you know, it's, it's a negative that Lord Coe and the World Athletics Federation are seeking to uphold, and I think that's a very bad way to go. Maybe, but I think the best way to do it is to, is to say stop, pause, continue investigating, but for now, preserve the integrity of women's sport. Yes. Right, Amelia? I mean, that's 100%. where please I think... Mean, please give us a shot. Yeah. Please. In your case, literally. Literally, <laughs> yes. Uh, great to talk to you both. Thank you both very much. Thank you.